Welcome back everybody. As of late I've been getting a lot of questions about how I service my weapons post range um, prior to service. There's a lot of debate here, a lot of opinions, but you asked me my opinion so I'm going to give you my general procedure for maintenance. In this example we're using a P239 SIG, takedown is pretty straightforward. Lock the slide back, verify the weapon's clear, rotate the takedown lever, release the slide. If you listen, you can hear a little bit of grit in this. Uh, this particular weapon has just shy of 10,000 rounds through it, 200 since the last cleaning. With the slide separated, remove your mainspring and recoil rod. You can go ahead and set that aside. Remove the barrel. First thing I like to do is take a little bit of solvent. Doesn't matter what you use, hops 9, gel, bore cleaner, whatever you like. Run it through. Start from the chamber ends. So there's no risk of damaging the crown. Push the brush all the way through. Pull it back, repeat as many times as you feel comfortable with. Generally, I would say three to four is enough. You want to set this aside, let the solvent do its job. At this point, you can turn your attention to the upper, taking a Q-tip, a little bit of solvent cleaner, repeat the process. Paying attention to the rods, that's where most of your dirt is going to be. Set that aside again, letting it do its work. For the lower, I don't like to use a lot of grease or oil or anything like that. GT85, CLP, whatever you like, essentially. Spray out the action. Let it sit. Turning your attention back to the barrel. You can now take a bore swab. and repeat the same process you use with the actual brush. Starting from the chamber end, let it run through, pull it back. Take a look, you can inspect your barrel, see if you see any grime build up. Probably run this patch through fairly wet once again. Set the patch aside. At this point, I go back to my CLP. Taking a fresh bore swab, run it through again. What you're doing is you're looking for the swab to come out clean. It takes a while depending on how many rounds and how much neglect you have, but eventually you should get a relatively clean swab. In this case, I'm pretty happy with that. Inspect the barrel. I'll include a picture at the end, but at this point everything looks pretty much as clean as it's going to get. You can take the patch you just used, go ahead and clean the face, and the feed ramps. You tend to get a lot of carbon buildup in this area. Using the same CLP, wipe down the barrel, its exterior, and the lugs. If you're using CLP or GT85 like I am, you can set this aside, let it air dry on its own, it'll dry in a minute or two. Turning your attention back to the upper, I go with the CLP, you really can't hurt anything here. Take a Q-tip, pay attention to the rails, and go at it. What you're looking for is any kind of carbon buildup, any kind of anomaly as far as carbon fouling, anything like that. If you see it, you may have to take a wire brush to it. Um, you want to use brass. If not, Q-tip will usually get the job done. And you can see we're actually removing a fair amount of carbon um, and whatnot, dirt, grime, whatever's accumulated in the bag for the last couple days. Same thing, spraying on a swab, you just want to make sure you can wipe down the whole weapon and not see any kind of carbon being removed. If you see the swab coming out dirty, keep going. Take a new one, beat the process, wash, rinse, repeat. Eventually you will see everything start to come out clean. Again, if you're using CLP or GT85, there's no need to let anything dry. You can let it air dry. Um, you just want to wipe it down to the point there's no excess or sitting solvent. Since that swab wasn't quite clean, we'll repeat the process once more. And 
and you'll notice it's coming out a little more clean. Again, for the sake of being thorough, we'll do it one more time. And as you can see, the weapon now is 99% clean. For all intents and purposes, it's ready to be oiled, but go ahead and set that aside. Take your mainspring and recoil rod. You can take a patch, wipe it down. Just go ahead and strip off any existing oil, carbon deposits, whatever else is managed to accumulate, take it down clean. I usually don't pay too much attention to the spring, so you can set these aside. Going back to the lower, you want to go ahead and address anything that is removed from the rails. As you can see, there was a good deal of carbon buildup. Wipe it down. Same process as the upper. Because we're using a CLP-based product, there's no need to worry about any excess residue. It'll evaporate on its own and actually leave a protective film behind. It's a little repetitive, but eventually you'll start to make progress. At this point, everything's ready to be reassembled. This is where I differ from a lot of people. Some people say run the weapon dry. I never agree on that. I'm not a big fan of excess grease. It doesn't matter what grease you use, but in my opinion, you need to use something. The guide rod, all you need is a little bit. Take it, distribute with your fingers. You should just feel a slight film on there. You don't want to see excess grease built up. You don't want to see gobs of it. You just want a real light film that just gives the weapon a little bit of a sheen. Go ahead and replace the spring. Turning to the barrel, you can see where your wear points are. The interior of the barrel, I would leave it with the CLP. There's no need to do anything else there. The lugs and the barrel itself, I apply a little bit of grease to. Again, that's about how much I use and most of that's gonna get wiped off. You just wanna see a real light sheen. Same thing for the lugs. At that point, using a clean bore swab, just wipe off any excess. Despite what people say, I've serviced these in multiple environments, this little bit of film here is not going to pick up any considerable dirt. And you think it picks up, it's going to be small enough, the weapon will have no problem clearing it. Turning your attention back to the upper, I put one spot of grease on each rail. <clears throat> and that's a lot more than you need. That's why you want to take a Q-tip and just run it down the rail. Flip it over, remove any excess. In my opinion, this is really important on weapons that have metal uppers, or rather steel uppers and aluminum lowers, because you will see accelerated wear if you don't run some form of grease. You can now go ahead and replace the barrel and your recoil spring. Make sure everything's seated nicely. Repeat the process for the bottom. As you can see, a little bit of the CLP hasn't quite evaporated. I'm not going to worry about it. It's compatible with the grease I'm using. Again, only takes a dot. And you're going to end up removing most of this. Just essentially paint it on. You want to see a real light coating. You can see at the back where your wear points are. Pay particular attention. You can see there's a little excess right there. You don't want to see that. Just take it and you should be good to go. At this point, reassemble. And if you listen now, you don't hear that grit anymore. Because there is a little bit of excess residue from the CLP, everything else, just take the weapon, wipe it down. And you should have a serviceable weapon that has nothing on here that's going to attract grease. There's no worries of 
environmental dust, sand, or anything else jamming it. And again, anything it does pick up with this light of a coating is going to be a small enough debris that the weapon will clear it no problem when you cycle it. Hope that helps you guys out. If you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to comment.